Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so sole proprietors and rental income recipients, right? We, you now have new filing requirements that we wanted to let you know about. Before we get started on that though, I wanted to give you a little information on me. I'm Wendy, uh, I'm a CPA. I've been doing this for a very long time, <laughs> over 20 years, pretty much most of my work in life. We've done, I've done returns for individuals, businesses, trusts. Uh, we do returns for retirees, government contractors, UN employees, you name it. We've, we've probably seen your situation before, especially with the way the world is now, right? We're, we're international agency, people living in one place, having assets in another place. We can help you figure out what you need to file. A little bit about TFX. Um, we're a top rated firm for those that live both in the US and outside the US. We've had people that have maybe never even lived abroad, but we can still help with all of the items that need to be filed here in the US. Uh, we have over 80 CPAs and EAs. Both of these designations require continual uh, education. And honestly, even with the last seven years, of, it seems every year there's a new tax issue. And so we always are researching, always trying to figure out what the next, especially this last one, there was just an accident tax and now we're researching that. Uh, we file over 40,000 returns. Uh, we have tons of experts, years of experience. All this to say, we, again, we've encountered your situation before. I don't think I've seen much new in my time with CFX because We've, we've, we've encountered it. If you have multiple corporations, if you have, if you have rentals, we can help with that. That's a little bit about me and TFX. Here's our agenda for today. We're gonna be going over this form, 8858, why you should care, what's changed, some definitions associated with that form and how it affects you and consequences if you don't file it. And then, as well as answering questions throughout this webinar, we'll also do a live question and answer. Um, I'll answer a couple at the end as well. So, all right, now for the exciting part for you. What's changed? Why are we bringing this up? Oh, well, the, the new title, here's, here's the title of this form previously, right? information return of US persons with respect to foreign disregarded entities. It's a mouthful. But the main thing that changed that you have to pay attention to is the and foreign branches. Now, what does that mean to you? Why, what is a foreign branch? Before we go into that definition, I wanna do another poll here and see what, um, if you filed your tax return yet this year or like you, Michelle, if you're a current, a current TFX client, uh, just let us know kind of where, where you are with your filing. If you're ready, I'd be very impressed if you're ready on January 12th. <laughs> All right. If you've never filed, maybe you just found out you should be filing, we can help with that. Do this for a few minutes and everybody respond. Well, if you're not a TFX client yet, <laughs> we uh, strive to be one of the best virtual pull-up firms available given our knowledge of uh, international issues. All right, just a couple more seconds. All right, I know you're all excited to get onto these definitions. <laughs> all right, so what's a foreign branch? Because it was added, right? So normally this foreign branch it was meant to apply to larger companies, right? Say Apple, headquartered in the US possibly, has a branch in Ireland. 
right? So that would be their foreign branch. Unfortunately, that when they changed this title to 8858, they also included uh, in the instructions that a foreign branch also includes a qualified business unit. So we'll go over what a qualified business unit is. Basically, if you are doing any kind of activity outside of the US that could be considered a trade or business and you have a separate set of books or records, then you have a qualified business unit. So say you have a consulting, side consulting, you only earn 10,000, but you just did it on the side outside of your normal work. Normally when we do your tax return, we would, you would tell us, hey, I got 10,000 for consulting. I spent $5,000 on expenses for that consulting. Here you go, we'll put, add it to your return, we'll file it. Well, the fact that you gave us your income and expenses, that's your separate books and records. So you have a qualified business unit. And we'll go through a few examples of uh, people just to kind of give you more of an idea of how this applies. And I know these are a lot of terms. You don't have to remember all of them, we will. Um, but I just wanted to let you know how, how we get to this point, how this creates, how this causes it to affect you. Uh, so we'll go through Kate. She's a designer in London and she earns $25,000 from say a, a masterclass that teaches you how to start your own design business. She also earned 50,000 from design services, just to certain clients, just to her, her own clients, nothing to do with the uh, masterclass that she provides. Well, the, for the IRS, these are two separate businesses, right? She has an education business and she has a design service business. On her return, we would report these two businesses separately. And she would also need to have file two 8858, one for the education business and one for the design business. Let's go through another scenario for you. We got Robert, he lives in Paris. He will go through each of his items. He earns wages from an employer of 100,000. That is not a separate business. He's not keeping track of income and expenses. He's not, he's working for an employer. So he does not need to file any 8858 for that. He just needs to report it on his return. However, the 25,000 that he earns from his side projects, that would be considered a business and he would give us the income and expenses and we'd report that on 8858. He also has a rental in France. That has income and expenses considered a business that's earning income, would also need to file a form 8858. So he would also need to file two, one for the side project and one for the rental. So what happens if Robert lived in the US instead? How would this affect his filing requirement? He still has his wages from the employer, that he still just reports on his return as normal, no additional form. He still has the 25,000 from his side projects, but because he's doing the, he has that business inside the US, his unit is in the US, he does not need a file form 8858 for that because it is just him doing some side projects in the US. However, his rental is still in France. So because that is a business still outside the US, he would still need to file form 8858, even though he's living in the US. The rental is in France. So hopefully that helps you out a little bit with trying to figure out how this would apply. Again, you don't have to, you're lucky because you can come to us and just give us all your information and we'll let you know what those requirements are. So before I get started, well, no, let's do this. I'll, I'll tell you, so what doesn't constitute a qualified business unit? A royalty is a perfect example, right? Because say, say you wrote a book 10 years ago, you haven't edited it, you haven't touched it, and you're still receiving royalties from people purchasing that book. That is not a business. Uh, it's, it's, it, you would not need a file form 8858 for this. You still need to report the income, but you don't have to uh, do that. All right. So 
this was definitely an unintended effect on individuals. I don't think they meant, the IRS meant to try and grab every rental and sole proprietor outside of the US. They were trying to catch these larger businesses. And unfortunately, you, you now have an extra filing requirement as goes with government, right? Uh, the main takeaway is you need to know that uh, the 8858 is mandatory for all sole proprietors or sole traders or owners of rental property who are carrying out business outside the US. So again, like Robert, he has his rental in France. No matter where he lives, in the US or in France, he needs to file Form 8858. Some other another takeaway from this is also just knowing that if you have any kind of business, just know that you will need to file something. <laughs> Lucky you. So if you have a corporation, a partnership, or like we've been talking about, a sole proprietorship, an unincorporated business, you will need to file something, whether it's the 5471, all these numbers that you're probably never going to remember. <laughs> But again, sometimes you might even have to file a couple of these, but we will help you with that. We'll help you figure out what you need to file. But just for reference, just to give you a little education on it, here's a, a good flow chart for you, right? The number one thing you look at, do I have a business or rental property, right? If you don't, you're, you're free, <laughs> go about your business. But if you do, like a lot of people do nowadays, you need to determine or we will for you what the business structure is, right? You will look at the organization documents and see if, as some of you might already have a corporation or a partnership, you know that you've already been filing these forms, the 5471 and 8865. What's new now are the ones on the left for the rental property and sole proprietorship. So as soon as you have one of those, you need to file form 8858. Sometimes if you're a corp, you might need to follow it as well, but we'll help with that. So this is a general idea so that you can see, but you will need to file something as long as you have a business or rental outside the US. All right, so this is always fun to look at, especially for preparers. This is the average time it, the IRS estimates that it'll take a person to complete these forms. So as you can see, it's not a simple uh, couple of figures and submitted it. I mean, they take a week or two, theoretically a whole business week in order to complete these. Fortunately, you have us, who we've been doing this for a long time. We know how to fill out these forms. We know the fields that need to be filled out. We know all of it so that the IRS will know you're in compliance with your reporting requirements. Nothing will be, should be missed. So what, what happens if you don't file? That's always what, what we care about, right? Well, if you don't file this form, say you had one of those corporations that also is required to file this form, there's a $10,000 penalty for not filing or even not filing on time. So it's very important to always file on time because you may not even know you have this requirement. And if you are late with your return, you're automatically exposed to these kind of penalties. The other penalty for individuals, for these, if you have the rental or if you're a sole proprietor, is a 10% reduction in your foreign tax credit. And what does that mean? Say Robert with his French rental, right? Say he paid $1,000 to France for his income that year. He can now take that $1,000 and use it to help offset US tax on that same income. Unfortunately, if say if he didn't do it and he was forced to take this reduction, he would now only have $900 to offset US taxes. So he may owe US taxes when he shouldn't have if he had filed on time and filed this form. So you don't wanna pay, nobody wants to pay taxes when they don't have to, right? So it's always good to file the form you need to and to file on time. I can't emphasize that enough. <laughs> so speaking of filing on time, 
this, the next deadline for individuals is April 18th. If you don't think you're gonna make that, you definitely wanna request an extension. So we, we make this very easy in the portal. So when you sign up with us, we'll have a list. As you can see here, we have the, if you have a, if you have to file a US business return, those are due in March. Your individual, if you reside in the US, is in April. And then as a lot of you know, if you're living outside the US, you get until June, but you can always file an extension to go until October. But with all of these deadlines, we try really hard to send you reminder emails. We have it up there for you to see every time you log in. Um, if there's any way you can mark these on your calendar, just make sure that you're, you're aware of them so that you're not late, especially if you might be subject to filing one of these returns. So here's a, an example, and you'll see, we, you can start requesting extension on January 23rd. That's when the IRS opens up and allows us to start filing. As you can see, I mean, it's so quick. You answer a couple of questions, submit it. I always recommend if you think at all, you might be uh, not able to make the deadline, request the extension. It's, it's never a bad, bad idea. And you can always reach out to our support um, and they can help you if you find any issues and they're with requesting that extension. But again, you can't do that until January 23rd. So mark your calendar for that. The TFX, again, we help clients both abroad and in the US. And again, I, I don't know that many people anymore that don't have you know, a bank account outside the US or a rental or a family member that maybe gifts them some money that does not live in the US. So these are all things that you wanna be aware of and, and it's good to come to TFX. Uh, we, we have years of experience, whether you're in the US or abroad, we make sure we're able to get all, get the eligible deductions and credits. We try to help you get all of those. We, we don't want you to pay more than you have to. Uh, we put a lot of work into our technology. We have a questionnaire that tries to just catch anything that you may not even be aware as a filing requirement. We'll ask you some questions. We try to make communication, especially with everybody being everywhere. We try to make that key. You can email, you can chat, you can call. We try to make it as easy as possible. Now, oh, over 90% of our clients return every year. That being said, we, we know that we're doing a good job and, and we wanna spend our marketing dollars on our loyal clients instead of just throwing it at ads, right? So that's why we've always had this referral program where you get a $50 credit on your account, your friend gets $25 if you refer them, right? Well, now we have, as soon as you sign up three firms, you get an additional 150. So as you can see here, if you signed up three people, you would get a $300 credit. Nine people, $900. You can pretty much pay for your return just by referring people you'd probably refer anyway. So now let's do a little poll and see what you thought of this webinar. Did, did we answer your questions? Did we confuse you? <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully uh, you have a better idea of what might be required of you this year if you have that rental that you've never had to file an additional form for. And if you could also add in the comments, just if there's anything you would like us to cover again in the future. And then we can probably try and put together a webinar for that. So if there's anything you have questions on that you want a little more information on. If you enjoy all of the, all the terminology I threw at you. <laughs> so. All right, so yeah, so the chat is open. So you should be able to, if there's anything there, like I said, that you wish you knew more about and you'd like us to cover, let us know. And I'm looking, I can probably answer a couple of these questions 
now. I do see a question from Danielle. She is a dual citizen and you have a, a sole proprietor and your business consists of a few services. Yeah, see, it depends. So she, she's wondering, she does different services and in Canada, they treat this as one business. We would look at that and see, um, we would look at it and see if the IRS could treat it as one. That's something we would have to just, we'd look at with you and go over because sometimes they're related enough that they're in the same. But as with our previous example, education and the, the design services were completely separate. So we, we wouldn't be able to combine that. So I can't give you an exact answer, Danielle, until we, we talk to you a little more, um, but we'd have to look at it. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we've got over here. Um, Jen Johnson, well, they might be answering you right now. Let's see, <laughs> like they are. Um, If there's no tax requirement in the foreign country for short-term rental property and 8858 is filed, well, would there be any tax due in the US? Honestly, the US makes you report everything, right? And right now the 8858 is just an informational return. And so it doesn't matter whether your country treats taxes, anything on it, you would have to file and report that income and expenses anyway in the US and, and depending on the income, there might be tax on it. It all depends on what your other income is and, and all of that. And Douglas is wondering what is a sole proprietorship? Basically, I think you're right, Douglas. A lot of time, pretty much any freelance work, no matter how small, if you have a site, and this is and this is where we'd have to talk to you, right? Because sometimes there's just a hobby that maybe you made a couple hundred dollars on. We would treat that differently than a business, but we would look at with you and ask, ask you questions to help determine whether it would be a sole proprietorship. Or I, we've had people come in thinking that they have a sole proprietorship, but they actually have a, a partnership that or a corporation that they didn't realize because it's the U.S. has their own rules about the way uh, things are treated in the U.S. Uh, let's see. Liz has a one-third ownership in an investment property. Uh, you definitely need to file for that. We would report the income and expenses as usual, but we would probably talk to you about whether that would be treated as a partnership and also if you would need to file 8858 as well. So unfortunately with, with a lot of tax questions, it all depends on your personal situation. So we would have to look at how it's set up, if there's any kind of agreement between the partners, all of that. Um, Glenn is asking, if he needs to find out what form he needs to file, does he need to schedule a tax planning or can he just, can we do it as a normal package? Um, it depends, your favorite answer. <laughs> um, I would say you could probably come to us first and fill out the questionnaire and we could ask you more questions and we can see if we can, we can get it resolved within. Uh, if we can't, or if you have additional questions, we have some clients that want to know how, how to treat the expenses within the corporation in order to minimize the US tax. So in those cases, it's really good to have the tax planning consultation because they can really look at that with you and help determine. Um, but I would say you could start with the questionnaire and then we could tell you if the tax uh, you know how you uh, It's not a warranty, no. So. All right, I think, let's see some more. I'll take one more and then we'll wrap up. And I just wanna let you all know that again, you will receive an email with all the questions 
and answers and with this uh, webinar, a video. So don't be worried if you feel like you're missing something. Um, okay, Pamela, this will be the last question. Uh, you're an American and Italian living in Italy. You own your own house. Um, unless you rent it, right? Um, if it's just your primary residence where you are living, you're not renting anything out, most likely you will not need to file anything for that. It's when you're renting and having income and expenses. Okay. All right. Well, I think we'll uh, go ahead and finish up. I appreciate everybody coming today and listening to this webinar. Just let us know if you need anything else. You can reach out at any time and, and ask questions.